When I purchase a vehicle for any reason, whether it's an adventure vehicle or just my daily driver, I always like to have uh, an intimate knowledge of how it's built, put together, what it can do, especially when it comes to my off-road vehicle. I tend to like to do all the maintenance on it. I like to install all the lift kits, the, uh, the bumpers, all the aftermarket parts because I like to know how everything goes together. It also kind of oddly creates a bond with this vehicle. And I've had this with each and every vehicle I've owned to some extent, some more than others. And I feel like we've had a very short time with curiosity. And here I am cleaning it out because it has to go. Unfortunately, circumstances that are not exactly our fault, but kind of are, has led us to have to get rid of this Jeep. And it pains me to do so. It's been fun to have this Jeep and, and it's just one in a long line of Jeeps that I've had. And it won't be the last. But unfortunately, this is goodbye. Yeah, so probably a really weird way to intro a video a week after I just talked about my love of Jeep. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I don't have curiosity anymore. And it is kind of weird timing. I wanted to tell that story a long time ago and kind of break up that versus the video that I'm sharing today uh, because it is just kind of a, a weird situation. Um, I love Jeep, I always will, and last week's video was, was a testament to that. I do love Jeep, I always will, um, and circumstances have taken place that has put me in a position where right now I don't own a Jeep. I do still have a Jeep in the driveway, <laughs> thanks to my daughter. Um, and we will still work on that one and we'll bring videos of, of anything she decides to do, we'll film it and, and put that stuff on here because again, our family does love Jeeps and we always will. And more than likely within the next couple of years here, we will have a Jeep again. Um, I really did, again, wanted to tell that story um, about our family. I did forget one thing though, pretty pretty major thing. I did not, not purposely, I did kind of leave out a little bit too much about what my brother's experience was um, growing up too. His was very similar to mine. He, um, he got a Jeep pr pretty early on, just like I did. They rebuilt it, he got that experience too. Um, it, I, to me, it's kind of his story to tell, um, but I did want to mention that I, I did, I inadvertently somehow leave his part of that out. I guess focus more on my story, but um, I, I need to I need to bring that back and 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 add that in and and just let you guys know and uh, apologize. Sorry, bro, that uh, I didn't get you into that first video. Uh, but this video, besides the fact that we did sell Curiosity. Um, I, the circumstances leading up to it are, are not what we wanted to deal with. So um, I'm going to let my past self tell that story. So after we purchased Maggie, everything was all good and we were happy. But 26 days after we bought it, we got an email from Ford. Ford was saying, your Bronco is now going into production at the end of the month. We had four weeks before it was going into production. That didn't mean we knew when it was coming, but it was going into production and we weren't planning for it because once we bought the 4Runner, we knew we were happy. We were going to have to wait a whole other year for the Bronco to show up. And uh, now we had the two vehicles we wanted. We had the Jeep and we had the 4Runner. So we didn't need anything else. And now getting this letter, we had a big decision to make. And uh, <laughs> 
It was either let the Bronco come and buy all three vehicles, which would have sucked, or we sell the Jeep and buy the Bronco. <laughs> so I'm introducing you on this wind, uh, windy day to Ohana. We call it Ohana because Ohana means family and family means leaving nobody behind. And we are in a community of off-roaders and we don't care what you drive. So Broncos, Jeeps, Toyotas, <laughs> we're, we're open to everything. So uh, Ohana is a 2023 Badlands edition, 2.7 liter V6. Four door, obviously, um, which is perfect for what we needed. This vehicle is actually like I say, it's replacing Curiosity, so we needed everything that it had. And if you remember when that Toyota video came out, we were talking how, you know, originally the Bronco was going to be the one that kept up with the Jeep. So we ordered this to basically match what the Jeep had. So it's locked front and rear. It doesn't have the Sasquatch, patch, Sasquatch, <laughs> Sasquatch package. We did order it that way, but in the order process, um, you know, we ordered this on December 23rd of 2021. So it was a year and a half before we got this. In that process, we lost the 22 order. We had to reorder for 23. And uh, they canceled the Sasquatch at that time. They were canceling Sasquatches on for everybody because they couldn't get the parts to build them. So we don't have the Sasquatch on this, which doesn't really bother me too much because really all we're losing out on is a little bit of different gearing. Um, the 35 inch tires, which I didn't like the tires that came on anyway, they would have been replaced shortly. So we can put our own tires on here. And the lift kit they put on from the factory is very minor. This one needs a little bit bigger, more aggressive lift and tires. So I'm not disappointed that we don't have the Sasquatch. I'm more disappointed that we ordered something and we didn't get what we exactly wanted. But either way, we're pretty happy. We're out here on its second shakedown run. Um, we did a quick run prior to this, but we've, I haven't even played with the, the GOAT modes yet all that much, but it's got like six or seven GOAT modes in here, different things that it'll do. We're just getting to know it, but you will be seeing this on the trails from now on from us. Curiosity will still be around. We happen to know the person that bought that particular Jeep fairly well. So don't worry, he'll still be in the videos, but this is our primary ride. You'll be watching us build this. We'll be putting that lift kit and tires on in the future. We've got the bumper, the winch to put on before Moab. So yeah, that's uh, kind of a big surprise to us. And we've been holding this one back for a little bit as other things have been happening in the background too. But um, yeah, we're really excited to have it and uh, excited to show you how we build it. Yeah, so now I'm a trader. I'm a Bronco owner. <laughs> I go back to kind of what I was talking about in the video. Um, we named it Ohana because Ohana means family, right? And to me, I, I really don't care what you drive. I've, I've met hundreds of great people uh, in the off-road community, out on the trails, at the Jeep Safari. The Jeep Safari doesn't mean, they don't require you to have a Jeep, uh, unlike some other events do. The Jeep Safari is open to anybody with a four-wheel drive uh, vehicle for full-size, not uh, ATVs, UTVs, not that kind of thing, but a full-size vehicle, or mid-size, I guess, in a, in a Jeep's case, I, I suppose, but um, in general, you, you get the idea, not an ATV, UTV. So, you get to see all those vehicles, and I think they're cool. I am a car guy. I really don't care what it is. I don't, I'm not big on the whole battles and, and the lines that are drawn per vehicles. It, it's so ridiculous to me. Um, everybody makes some good cars, and everybody makes some junk cars, hands down. And, and people are going to pick what they like, just like anything else out there. But I'm tired of the toxicity out there. It's, it's ridiculous. Yes, right now, I'm a Bronco driver. And like I've said over and over again, I still love Jeep. But I also love Bronco. Growing up, 
Broncos were out there too. They were side by side with the Jeeps down in Moab, and I fell in love with them. And I've been wanting to build one for years. Um, they just, I didn't need to. I had the Jeeps. Uh, again, I, I thought the Broncos were cool. My dad had Broncos growing up. He had um, this, uh, uh, the, this other one that when I was younger, that's what we drove. We were in a Bronco the whole time, well before I got Jeeps. And I know my daughter doesn't want to hear that because she's, she thinks I'm a traitor. She's, she's mad at me, but she'll forgive me. It's fine. <laughs> but again, I don't really care. I'm going out to explore the world. I don't care what it is. Whether I'm in a Toyota or a Jeep or a, a Ford, I really don't care. I'm going out to explore the backcountry or explore my local museum, and I don't really care. I'm excited to build this Bronco because I've been wanting to build a Bronco. And like I said in last week's video, I've been building Jeeps for 30 plus years. And while I'm always open to doing more, I wanted something new right now. We have that in the Bronco and in the Toyota. So I'm, I'm branching out a little bit. And like I said, uh, we joke around here. Uh, what I didn't mention last week is uh, Misty told me that if I ever got rid of the Jeep, she'd get rid of me. So she's given me a couple of years to uh, get a new Jeep. So luckily for me, I'm getting a little bit of a break here. <laughs> I've taken her car <laughs> and I don't have a Jeep. So now I'm in trouble. <laughs> so we'll make that right. I will get her another Jeep sometime in the future. But for now, we are going to build this Bronco. We will bring you those things starting next week. I have our first installs on this Bronco. They're minor stuff, but uh, it all builds up into the bigger stuff as we get further along in the future here. We've got the lift kit, tires, all the jazz coming. i got a uh, bumper put on there so I can put the winch that came off of Curiosity on the front of this thing. And uh, we're going to go out and have fun. And I, we've already had it out a couple of times, and I, get, I had to say I, I really enjoy it. I like it. It's very different to drive. It's you know, I'm used to those round fenders of a Jeep. These are squared off. It, it's definitely different, and it'll be very interesting to see what it feels like out on the trail, because uh, I have no idea what it's going to feel like out there. I've been on dirt roads, not really Moab-esque trails, so. That we've got that to look forward to, um, and it's a, a, exciting times around here. I, it's it's just been fun. Um, it's just a sad deal that this is the way it had to work. And uh, you know, once once we already purchased the Toyota, and then literally less than a month later, we get the email from Ford saying, "Hey, we're pleased to tell you that your Bronco's going into production." <laughs> it's like you got to be kidding me. We just did this, and. Had we known, we would have held out those three weeks. We'd been dealing with just a single car for a while. We could have done it, and uh, we just pulled the trigger a little bit soon. But at the same time, we both kind of had this um, feeling to go get it. So we went and got the Toyota, and no regrets. Misty loves driving that car. I love that car. I shouldn't call them cars. I, that's a pet peeve of mine. Trucks. The trucks. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna continue to do this, and we're gonna have fun in this Bronco. And um, I guess if if nobody wants to follow a Bronco, then I guess you can just you know go somewhere else. But I know nobody would do that because we're gonna go out and explore things together, no matter what. So anyway, I just wanted to bring you that update and kind of. Uh, tell you that the content moving forward will will be with uh, a Bronco primarily. Um, however, I did tease it a little bit. We do know the person that bought uh, Curiosity quite well, so we will still do builds with Curiosity and you'll still see uh, him in the videos. So not that you got too attached to him, but uh, we will still see it out there. So that's exciting for me that I can still build you know, help build that particular Jeep, uh, even though I don't, I don't actually own it. So, uh, one other thing I'll just leave you with, um, for those of you that did watch our land use, uh, video a few weeks back, the blue ribbon, the blue ribbon coalition 
and the state of Utah had both filed a lawsuit to stop the closure of those 317 miles of trails down near the Moab area. So what that means right now is um, as of October 30th, um, there's a 45-day stay on the closures um, while the closure is being reviewed by, unfortunately, the BLM. So do we think they're going to overturn their own decision? More than likely not, and that would lead into a full-blown lawsuit. So for right now, those trails would be reopened until this review process takes place, and then we have to see what happens from there. Could they do a little bit of a reversal? Maybe, but I'm not going to get our hopes up because that rarely ever happens because the people that review it are the ones that made the decision in the first place. Um, there's also been legislature um, submitted to, I uh, believe, the Senate um, from Mike Lee, uh, our senator from Utah, that uh, is trying to also stop this and stop these land grabs. So there's a little bit of hope. We have more than just uh, our, our friends from the Blue Ribbon Coalition fighting for us to keep these lands open. We have the state of Utah behind us and um, our senators. So um, there's hope on the horizon for that, and uh, I can't wait to see how that works out. I really um, I need to get down there and run some of these trails before they close them. I just don't know uh, if I'm going to be able to. So hopefully um, we get some uh, sense into some of these people. i got to be careful how I say that. <laughs> but um, hopefully things turn out better for us and that we can all come together um, on a bit better plan than just completely uh, closing all those trails. So anyway, off my soapbox. Please come back next week and uh, check out our uh, installs on the Bronco. And like, subscribe, do all that stuff. And thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Anyway, I'm off to the next adventure. I hope you guys have a good week and uh, find some adventure of your own. Thanks a lot, Ford.